gives you some idea. I'm not going to go through all the details of all the ones there, uh, but it gives you some idea of the feedbacks and the mechanisms behind them. Oh, by the way, heating is applied to the whole Earth system, and it's vast. I mean, it takes time to bring a cauldron of water to the boil, doesn't it? You turn the heat up full, and the temperature goes very slowly up. Little bubbles form on the bottom of the sea. Now, the inertia of the world is vast, and the heat engine has to do this. So here we go. Heating from all sources drives the energy that slowly puts the temperature up. It has to heat ocean. It has to heat the land mass. It heats ice before it starts to melt. It heats the atmosphere. Melting of ice takes a lot of energy before the temperature changes at all. It's a phase change from solid to liquid. Oh, and evaporation of water, increased water vapor in the atmosphere. It's also a phase change that takes a lot of energy. So the heat goes through those processes before it starts to make a difference to the temperature. And if we look at changes in temperature and base our strategic policies on observed effects of temperature rise, we have missed the point on global heating. What matters is what's happening to the heat engine and strategic policies geared to observation of current effects are strategically disastrous in engaging with the system's behavior. Oh, and by the way, just to complete the picture, there's another feedback cluster hiding here. The hotter it gets, the less inert the system is, and the faster it gets hotter. That one's only been in the uh, understanding of our science domain for the last few months. So there we are, and we can put in that final feedback cluster. Now that encapsulates the feedback and driver system of the global climate behavior. So, let's summarize. Most of the systems known to affect climate change are now in net positive feedback. Each feedback mechanism accelerates its own specific process. But as a whole, this complex adaptive feedback system consists of an interactive set of mutually reinforcing subsystems. Isn't that wonderful? What it means is this, that the output from one feedback changes the temperature a bit faster. That feeds into all the other feedbacks, so they reinforce each other. That's an unstable system. It can move very quickly indeed. It's what we call a second order feedback system. I remember presenting this material for the first time, you know, to the uh, European Environment Agency in Copenhagen, oh, February 2006, I think it was. And Jackie McGlade, the director of the, the agency, and I were talking afterwards, and uh, I said, I don't think we're going to see this second order feedback system operating for a long time because temperature rises very slowly. She said, David, this is a complex adaptive system with feedback on feedback. This can go very quickly indeed. Jackie is one of the members of the Resilience Alliance that looks at exactly this stuff at a high level of mathematical precision. There are only a very few mathematicians in that able to do this kind of work, but she's one. So I'll then I change my presentation. <laughs> Anyway, boom, you asked me to be radical and say, how, say it how it is, so here's how it is. Evidence for that from Dennis Bushnell, who in parallel, of course, with James Hansen, uh, Dennis Bushnell is chief scientist at the Langley Research Center of, of uh, NASA. His email of the 12th of January last year reported on the phenomenon that were being observed across the world. And he said, warming is accelerating greatly and especially recently. Oh, and that was before the anomaly of 2007, the massive loss of ice from the polar area. So the evidence of acceleration is already in the public domain. That moves us on not just to dealing with the, the effects of acceleration, 
but moving towards what we call a tipping point where things really run out of control, not just smooth acceleration, but behaviors that go unstable. So here we introduce the work of James Hansen from the Goddard Institute. Again, same sort of date from James' publication. The Earth's climate, remarkably sensitive to global forces. Positive feedbacks, accelerating feedbacks predominate. And that allows the whole planet to be whipsawed between states. It's what we call a metastable system. Small pushes lead to big movements. Recent greenhouse gas emissions place the Earth perilously close to dramatic climate change that could run out of our control. Great dangers for humans and other creatures under the whole life support system of planet Earth. You see, we really do have a problem. 